Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever. Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me! Hey, 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 it's Fe- it's Chaplain Andrew, or hey, 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 it's Fed Elbert, as they used to say back in the Bill Cosby days. Hey, 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 it's Fed Elbert, but hey, 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 it's Chaplain Andrew. How are you all doing today? I almost forgot. Well, I had a phone call coming in today. So I had a phone call come in today that was very important to us here at TGIF. And I got some great news. I can't speak. Spill the beans just yet all the way, but I can spill some of them. God's blessing, Mr. and Mrs. TGIF, uh, very, very, very highly. We're being blessed very highly. And as I was, uh, I knew earlier that I had to do a show. I was getting into praise and worship. I was getting ready for my show. And then as I was doing that, I had some news come in on the phone, and I totally, totally slipped my mind that... I needed to come on with you guys because of the good news that God's doing for us. So let's give the Lord a, good, a clap offering on that note for excellent news coming our way. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that you got it all under control. And that you, Lord, have excellent news for us. Give me just one second. Just one more second, guys. I'm texting Dr. Tom. With that being said, guys, we had some great news come up our way today, and we are just so super excited. And uh, yeah, we just want to share the good stuff with you. We want to share what's God going, what we got, what God's got going on in our lives. Got me cold Mountain Dew, Diet Mountain Dew, actually. So yes, I got a great message in store for you today, and uh, everything's going well. Everything's going good. We are here. We are here, we are here, and we love each and every one of you. So, but for this reason being that we are going to do some stuff Wednesday that we need to do for the good news, which I will tell you more about that in a little while later, that we need to record Wednesday night. Thursday's already posted. You just got, well, scheduled to be posted for Thursday at 6 o'clock. So we got that started. And all we got to do is we got to record for Wednesday. And we got to post that for Wednesday so we can get Wednesday there. So that way once Wednesday shows up, you'll still be able to hear what I have to say for Wednesday, what Pastor John has to say. But it'll be recorded completely, entirely. So with that being said, we love you. We want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have a show. I tell you this all the time, but it's the absolute truth. We love you, and if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have a show. That's the main focus is you guys. is encouraging you each and every week. And that's why we do that here at TGIF, to encourage you each and every week. So with that being said, we love you. We thank you for tuning in this week. Let's give you a round of applause for tuning in this week. Thank you, Lord, that not only do they tune in, but you caused them to tune in. And thank you guys for showing up this week and being part of this episode of TGIF. So let's get into a few, but brief, announcements, starting with... Number one, go to communitycloud222 at gmail.com, spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D, 222 at gmail.com. 
And guess what you can do right there? You can send me all of your prayer requests. Or if you want me to shout to you on the podcast, send me your first name, your city, and your state. And I'll shout out to you on TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, be aware, guys, you can call us at 1-302-448-8443. Again, that's 1-302-448-TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, be aware, we're going to be doing this each and every week outside the classroom Wednesdays, where we think outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Pastor John's messages from Sunday morning Bible study, post those to the show so you guys can enjoy them, and as also so we can take his messages to outside of the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. Also, be aware we're going to be doing this each and every week now as well, Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays, where we take Pastor Lance and Ernissa Travis's messages and we post those to the show as well so you can enjoy their messages as well and so we can take and get their messages outside of the classroom as well to those who need the gospel each and every day. Also, be aware, guys, we're going to be starting this real soon, the rumble where we'll be shaking the heavens rattling the earth and rumbling against the principalities of darkness and evil. The Bible says that we don't fight or rumble against what? Flesh and blood, but are principalities of darkness and evil. We're going to take one day out of the week, and we're going to fight, 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 pray, 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 rumble, 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 preferably at midnight. Now, why do I say preferably at midnight? Because darkness loves darkness. Let me say that to you again. Darkness loves darkness. When you look at your hand in a dark room, can you see your hand in front of your face? Of course not. Why? Because darkness loves darkness. Darkness collects. And when you turn on a light, some of the darkness is dispelled. Finally, when all the lights are turned on, all darkness is dispelled. The same thing with Jesus. When you display God's light or Jesus' light, darkness is dispelled. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, not at the poof, ta-da, here I am, at the name of Jesus, Demons tremble and Satan flees. Let me say that to you again. It says in his word, at the name of Jesus, not the poof, ta-da, here I am, at the name of Jesus, Satan flees and demons tremble. So all you got to do when anything comes up after you and it comes to tempt you, you say, Jesus, and it's done. So what are we going to do on the rumble? We're going to take one day out of the week and we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for the listener and we're going to pray for the government and we're going to pray for the president. Whatever pops up, we are going to pray. For it. Let's pray for this man in the White House. Lord, we humbly come before you, Lord. We ask you to be with this man in the White House. We ask you to be with him on his every day, that when he does what he does, he does it for your glory, for what you want to happen in this in this world, not what he wants to happen. I ask you to be with him in health and to be with him in finance. And Lord, I ask you to direct and guide him in everything that he does. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. That is the rumble. Also, guys, be aware, we're going to be doing this each and every week. Worship Saturdays, we'll be doing nothing but worshiping God. Just praise, prayer, and worship. Grab your favorite drink and just relax your lounge chair. Enjoy the fabulous music we here have on the show. All we're going to do is just praise, prayer, and worship. That is Worship Saturdays. Also, guys, be aware that you can download Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L, available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. And what can you do on that app? Well, first off, you can listen to this very show. Second, you can make f- comments with a free Spreaker.com account. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Again, it's you can make comments with a free Spreaker.com account. That's, again, S P R E A K E R. Dot com. Also, you can connect with me through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. Let me send you, let me to give you a personal TGIF life hack. So here's the scenario. You want to send an email to TGIF, but you don't want to go spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D-222 at G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. Ooh, see how much of a breath it takes to get it out of there? Well, here's what you do. Download Podcast Portal, again, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. And then you go into Podcast Portal and go to the right-hand corner of any page, bottom right-hand corner of any page, and click on the little envelope picture. It looks like an envelope. 
It's the email button. Click on there. Then click on your email client. Then type in your email and hit send. It's that easy. But it seems hard at first, but then when you go back, hit the always button though. Because when you go back to it again, guess what? As soon as you click the email button, that quick. It's that easy. It sends you straight to the email. You type in your email, you hit send. So it's that easy. It's click the email button, type in your email, hit send, you're done. But you got to click that always button. Also, what you can do on podcast portals, you can listen to the play buttons. 95 Fight the Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. KJIC out of Texas. My former church, Evangel Christian Churches. And my new church that I attend here in Ravenna, Ohio, Portage Community Chapel. So with Evangel, you just click on their Evangel button. It takes you to their YouTube page. And with Portage Community Chapel, now you click on their uh Portage, their button, and you just t- it takes you right to their Vimo page. So you can listen and see their videos as well, but you can also move around the screen. And if you're chatting with people on the app, you can do that as well. Also, be aware my favorite part of the app is the portal chat feature where you can communicate with not just me or the co host, but everyone who, who owns that app. Everyone in the world who owns that app, if 500 people own that app, you can communicate around the world, 500 different people. And that's my favorite part of the app. You can also send pictures. You can also send a picture straight from your phone. But here's what you got to do. You take the picture with your camera. You save it to your phone. You go into Portal Chat. You then click the camera on the bottom. You select the picture you want to put into the Portal Chat. And then you hit send. It's that easy. You can't take a selfie with it, but you can take a picture beforehand and then post that picture into the portal chat feature. Now we want to get to know who you are a little bit. We want to know a little bit about your day. So show us a little bit about yourself. If you're in France, you want to show us the Eiffel Tower, take a picture of the Eiffel Tower and show us. We'd like to know who you are. Now we don't want to know every single minute of what you do. There are some people out there who, who will post. I had 25 peas. I chewed them 25 times. I walked 25 feet to the couch and I sat on the couch. <laughs> That's not what we're trying to do here. We still want to get to know who you are. It goes like this. If I own, if I, if I pastor a church, but I know nobody in that church, can I pray for them? Absolutely not. Why? Because I don't know who they are. I don't know how to pray for them, who to pray for or what. So let us know who you are a little bit. Let us get to know you a little bit so we can get to know who you are, what you need prayer for, and what is going on in your life because that is the most beautiful thing we can do is to get to know each and every one of our listeners. Also, what you can do is that portal chat feature. Like I said, it's beautiful, it's awesome, and you're going to enjoy it. I know you will. That is Podcast Portal. Also, guys, one last announcement. Tell your Alexa devices, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal where you wear You can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices as well. We also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, ask Alexa to open Podcast Portal and she'll say welcome to, welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements. That does, once again, guys, conclude our announcements for today. Let's get into our first song of the show which is entitled, We're Going Up to the High Places by none other than Dr. Tom Wright. Enjoy, we're going up to the high places. We've been deceived by the devil too long. Tonight we're gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. What he said was his, has been ours all along. Tonight, tonight. Come on. 
Sorry about that. I was sending a quick text to my buddy, Dr. Scott. But that was going up to the high places by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Hey, let's do this. Let's get into our message for today. I got a great message for you. And no, Brian, my notes were not marked today. I, like I said, I totally almost forgot they were about to do this. So let's pray. I don't do it often, but it's good to pray before the message. So Lord, we humbly come back before you and we ask you, Lord, to be with us as we go through your word, as we look into your word, as we do what we need to do to be doers of your word. We ask you, Lord, to be with us as we do, as we uh, we, as we study your word and learn more about what it is you want us to know. And Lord, we ask you to forgive us of all of our wrongdoings, the knowing and the unknowing, because there are subconscious things, guys, that we do that we do not know that we do them. We ask you, Lord, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, like Bill Gaither once said, if you find anything, Lord, that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to live right, I want to be safe, and I want to be whole. So we thank you, Lord, that you are God and God alone, that you are going to be with us as we Dive into your word. And Lord, write, let, help us to write this on the tablets of our heart that when we depart, it will not depart from us. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's do this, guys. Today's message is a weird message. I call it weird because a lot of people have this persona. And it's a wrong persona as far as what I know. I'm not perfect at what I do. But I know... From what I experienced in my lifetime, it's a wrong persona. And what God's word says also. And you got to take an account to what God's word says. If God's word says one thing, it wouldn't say one thing, but then say an exact opposite and contradict itself. Because the word never contradicts itself. Never, ever, ever will the word ever contradict itself. So my question to you is, are you perfect? That's a question. Are you perfect with a question mark? Question is, are you perfect? Let's look at a few scriptures. Now, the persona that some people have is that, well, you got to be perfect. Be perfect as I am perfect. But we're not going to go with that just yet. But are you perfect? Romans 3.23. Let's get into the book of Romans for a minute. Chapter 3, verse 23. And yes, Brian, my pages were not marked. Starting at verse chapter 3 of Romans, Romans chapter 3, starting at verse 20, we just passed it up, we just passed it up, there we go, where are we at here, 22, it's so hard with my glasses, 24, where did it go, 23, at? 23, even no, that's 22. Sorry. Where is chapter, verse 23 at? 23. For all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. So, verse 23 in Romans chapter 3 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the question is, are you perfect? According to God's word, right absolutely there. Right there. In God's word, on verse 23 of Romans 3, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, right there it says, no. It says you ain't perfect. It says we all fall short of the glory of God, but are we perfect? In that scripture right there, you would think, absolutely not, right? That's what you would think first. So first off, we are not perfect. Everyone can see that in that verse right there, it says that we all what fall short of the glory of God. So, what does that mean that we all fall short, we all sin? We all mess up, we all screw up, in what? We're not perfect. So, verse chapter 3 of Romans, Romans 3.23, the Bible says, We all sin and fall short of God's glory every single day. So, are we perfect? In that scripture, no. 
Absolutely not. But let's go to Ecclesiastes, and it's uh, 720. Ecclesiastes 720. Let me put my notes down from it so I don't drop everything. We're, we're doing some stuff around this house and getting things straightened out for things. And I got a lot of stuff from near my table here. Ecclesiastes 720. That's Ephesians. Pastor Barry at my church that I attend right now loved the book of Ecclesiastes. This will be one of his favorite uh, passages in the Bible. Ecclesiastes is not a very long book at all. It's like one of those cities that when, you, when you're driving and you're taking a road trip, that if you blink, you'll miss it. <laughs> That's the book of Ecclesiastes. If you blink, you'll miss it. Because it's a very short read. It's like six chapters, I think it is. Because we went through with Pastor Barry not too long ago, the book of, went through the book of Ecclesiastes. And it's not a very long book, the book of Ecclesiastes at all. Where are we at? That's the book, the Apostle, the Apostle Jude. Okay, we need the, the we need the book of Ecclesiastes. Sorry about that, guys. Do do do. What I should be doing, since I don't have my uh, Bible pages marked, we should be doing the Jeopardy song. Do 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 do. do, do. <laughs> I like to be the class clown usually. When I was in class at Evangel, my church I used to go to in Michigan, and I got my associate's degree through those. We ended up, uh, let me look it up in the table contents. We were, I was going through the worship arts department, and Ephesians, I think I'm in the wrong testament here. Let me see. Oh, no wonder. 779. I was in the wrong testament. We're in the Old Testament. So we're going through, uh, going, I was going into, I was uh, in the uh, Worship Arts Institute, the Worship Arts Institute, and I got my, uh, my uh, degree through them, my associates, and I was the class clown, I'm telling you, I, I'd be, I would be literally munching on a hot dog or chewing on some chips right in the middle of class and <laughs> And everybody would just be cracking up. Okay, so we're in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7. It was just funny. Everyone would be cracking up. Starting at verse 20. So we got to go to verse 20, verse 20. The, the Old Testament is, is easier to read. Chapter 7, verse 20. For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Okay. Listen again. Chapter 7, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20. For there is no, there is not a just man on earth who does, does good and does not sin. So there is no man on earth who is what? Perfect. Zero. Zilch. Nata. Think about this. So the question is, are you perfect? In this scripture, no. Again, it says, first off, it says, we all fall short of the glory of God. And then the second scripture says, there's not even one just man in the earth. Think about this. That's one of the reasons why God desecrated Sodom and Gomorrah, blew them to smithereens. What do you think he did? The, the, one, of the, one of the angels came down and he says, Lord, look. He goes, would you save Sodom and Gomorrah for the, you know, whatever you know, how many people? The 90-something people. Uh, yeah, the 90-some people. Let me look this up so I can get this right. But, anyways. Hold on. Okay, my phone's going to cause some static. Uh, let me look up something. Just for a second. 
I want to make sure. I want to make sure I got this right. Okay. And it says, the Lord says, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, the whole place for their sake will be saved. So he, the angel, I believe it was, came down and says, would you save 50 people who was in Sodom and Gomorrah? God said, if there was 50 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I'd save them. And then he goes, what about, you know, 40 and 5? He says, for the 40 and 5 people's sake, I'll save Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he kept going down. Finally, he said, what if there was one righteous person in the city? Would you save Sodom and Gomorrah? And he says, yes, I'll save Sodom and Gomorrah for that one righteous person. Now, think about this, guys. There was, the Bible said, they were talking about Lot. Because back then, Lot, they thought Lot lived in the city. But he actually lived on the outskirts of the city. He lived like, you know, in this day and age, if it's like if you're in Ravenna, but you're, you're if you if you're driving through Ravenna, for say in Ohio here, right, and you just hit the verge of going into Rootstown, so you just crossed that line like one two houses down in Rootstown, you're technically in Rootstown or Ravenna. But see, Lot lived that close to the city that they thought he was in the city, but he wasn't. And they were thinking on Lot's behalf, but that wasn't the case. And so God said. If there's one righteous person in the city, I'll save Sodom and Gomorrah. But see, the problem is, this right here in uh, chapter 7, Ecclesiastes, verse 20, and I'll read this again, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Think about that. There is not a just man on this earth that does not that does good and does not sin. Let me say it to you this way. I'm gonna paraphrase it with using Sodom and Gomorrah. There is not a just man in that city who does good and does not sin. So why did God judge Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, God judged Sodom and Gomorrah for one reason and one reason only: that there was nobody in that city who was good. He thought about it. He says, "Yeah, if there's one person there, let me save that. I'll save the entire city for that one person." But God knew that there was not one person in that city who was saved. The angel tried saving it too because the angel apparently had compassion. I'm not sure if angels do specifically have compassion, but they might have compassion. I don't know. But I just know this, that he tried saving it. He was going to save that city for that one righteous person, but there was none. The Bible clearly says in Ecclesiastes 7.20 that there's no righteous man in on the earth that does good and does not sin. So, first, the question is, are you perfect? First two scriptures, we all fall short. Wrong. Eh, we're not perfect. Second scripture, there's no righteous man on the earth that does good and does not sin. Eh, nope, not perfect. So, so far, so far that this entire word is looking not in our favor. We're looking pretty rotten right now. We're looking like a man... I'm not perfect. I don't know what's going on, but oh man, this this right here makes us look like we're we're just nothing. But you know what? Let's get into our next scripture. Our next scripture will sum everything up. But as of right now, we look like we are goners. You ever you ever seen the prices? Right? They used to have that do 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 like you lose. I mean, we're looking bad news right now. Ecclesiastes. 720, just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, when Abraham pled to God, it was Abraham actually, pled to God to not destroy the city for that righteous, for that one righteous person. Let me make sure I put that in there so next time I read my notes, I know exactly what's going on. So we got to space this out for that one for that one righteous person but there was no righteous people there as scripture says that there is no righteous person who has done good and never sins. 
So in Ephesians, sorry about that, 720, I hit my pencil on the, the microphone stand here. As Ephesians 720 says, there's not one righteous person who does good and doesn't sin. And just like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was nobody per, nobody righteous in that city. That city was just the most wicked city you can ever, ever think of. So our next scripture is John 3, 16. And we all know this one. This is one of my absolute favorite scriptures. John 3, chapter 16. No, John chapter 3, verse 16, I should say. John 3, 16. This is a very, there you go, John 3. We're right there. Starting at verse. Okay, where are we? My glasses are really bothering me today. Starting at verse. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God, I'll keep reading, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, and that scripture right there. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever even though we're not perfect, even though we think we failed and we are rotten, we're miserable. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16, but even though we are not perfect, that scripture says, by God giving us, by God giving us or giving his son, his only begotten son on the cross for us that we Whoever believes in him should not die, but have eternal or everlasting life. So we may not be perfect. Here's what sums it up. But Jesus dying on that cross makes us perfect. See, it's all about the what? The atonement. The atonement of Jesus Christ. As of right now, we are absolutely 100% rotten, failed. We slipped, we fell, we are. I mean, right now, if it wasn't for Jesus and we were to die right this instant, the first thing that will happen is we'd hit hell in the handbasket. Sorry about that, guys. We'd, we'd split hell wide open in the handbasket. Why? Because the Bible says we've. The Bible says from the beginning of time you're born into sin. You've already screwed up before you even got there. See, the main thing that screwed us all up to begin with was, and they're not the cause of it, because we all have our own free choice, but Adam and Eve. They started the whole sin process along. If they had never done what they have done to begin with, and I'm not blaming them for it, but if they never did what they did to begin with, this whole sin aspect will be a whole lot different, and people won't have to... We wouldn't have to have forgiveness. We wouldn't, have, and that's the main thing, though. It's the atonement of the blood of Jesus, and we wouldn't have all that if they didn't do what they did. And so this would have been a whole lot different, a whole lot easier. We'd probably already be in paradise. We probably wouldn't be down here suffering like we are. But guess what? It's okay, because in plus, it's not their fault entirely. We make our own choices. We have a choice, even though we're born into sin. We have a choice that once we know. What is right and what is wrong. We Once we know that right and wrong, we have a choice to either listen or don't listen. God gives us a choice to either worship Him or dishonor Him. It's like when your mom says, Now remember, don't spoil your dinner. Don't get into the cookie jar. We have a right or we have a knowledge now to know that if we get into that cookie jar, mom's going to get us and spank us on our hands. And we know she said not to. So we have a choice right then and there. And kids are mischievous, let me tell you that. I have a couple nephews on my wife's side, and kids are very mischievous. <laughs> I'll tell you that for a fact, they are. But we have a choice at that moment to, to either listen to our moms and say, you know what, I'm going to listen to my mom. Or go into that cookie jar, smile, and go, he, 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 he. <laughs> and then grab a cookie or two or three or four, and then sneak into our bedrooms and shove them down our throats as fast as we can. (laughs) 
So we have that choice. Either which way it is, we have that kind of a choice. Sorry about that. Just like when it comes to God, we have that choice to either worship Him or dishonor Him. We got that choice. But here's the thing, though. We're all born into sin. We're all born into rotten to begin with. So we're all pretty much doomed to begin with because if we choose not to worship or honor God at all, we're doomed, period. But if we do choose to, then we're not doomed. But here's the thing, though. Even though we choose to worship God, we choose to love and honor Him as much as we can, we're still not perfect. We never will be. But the question is, are we perfect? And the answer to that is yes. Now, the reason why I say this is because, like I said earlier, it's the atonement. It's the atonement of Jesus Christ that died on the cross that makes us perfect. And only that makes us perfect. Nothing else in this world makes us perfect but the atonement of Jesus Christ. If it was not, again, for that atonement of Jesus Christ, we'd all be split in hell open, wide open in a handbasket. But the atonement of Jesus, the blood that he shed, the love that he poured on his people makes us perfect. What, what does it say? To be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Well, as the old song goes, have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And it keeps going. Are you washed? Are you washed? Are you washed in the snow-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? See, the Bible says that we need to have, He wants a people that is without spot or blemish. What does that mean? And, and here's the th thought that people have. you got to be perfect. Without spot or blemish, you got to be perfect. That means you got to walk in such holiness that anybody that looks at you falls straight on the floor and goes, Oh, and then they get slain in the spirit. Oh, yeah, I'm saved. No, that's not what the Bible's talking about. The Bible's not talking about we need to be dropped dead absolutely 100% perfect. That as soon as anything goes wrong, we have no emotions. We have no feelings. Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. Don't get me wrong. We should be doing that. Do we do that? No. But what does the Bible mean to be without spot or blemish? It doesn't mean to be so 100% absolutely holier than thou that you're without spot or blemish, that, that, oh man, I never, ever look at sin. I never commit this. I don't do that. I've never lied. I've never this. I've never that bull crunch. There are times in your life when you will lie. You'll say something you're not supposed to. Someone's going to cut you off down the road, and you mother scratch why I ought to. There's a lot of things in your life that will cause you to sin. Now, with that being said, the Bible never actually physically means that you need to be absolutely 100% dropped dead perfect, even though it says be perfect as I am perfect. What does it mean when it says that, when it says to be without spot or blemish? What that means is to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Because when you're washed in the blood of the Lamb every day, your garments might be not spotless. They may not be white as snow. Some of your garments might be like yellow snow. <laughs> as the old saying goes, don't eat the yellow snow. <laughs> your garments might be yellow snow. They might be brown. They might be whatever color they are. They might be rotten looking and holy and tattered. But you know what? When you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, being washed in the blood of the Lamb is like using shout. You ever seen the old, uh, the old, saw a spot remover called shout back in the 50s and 60s they still have it but back then it started it was called shout they used to have that shout they said that song about shout pick your hands up and shout throw your hands up and shout but they used to it was, it was a it was a cleaner they created back in the 50s and 60s called shout stain remover you'd spray it on the stain it'll take out your stain but see the blood of jesus does exactly that but better it doesn't take stains out of your clothes it takes stains off of your life. It makes you from rotten to beautiful. From, you know, destruction to life. It takes and brings you from run down to I'm excited about what tomorrow holds. So the 
the blood of Jesus is, does so much more than the spot remover does, but it does so much more. It does so much for you that that blood of Christ that was atoned on the cross for you and me does so much more than, than what we think it does. It doesn't just save us. It cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Jesus himself could just save us. You know, Jesus can just, at, at a whim, well, you're saved. But it's that blood that's the main thing that we got to get to is that blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that cleanses all, us from all unrighteousness. Now, don't get me wrong. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Will we sin? Absolutely. Will we fall short every day of the week? Absolutely. Are, are some of us going to fall short today, tomorrow, the next day? Yes. But guess what? That's okay. The blood of Jesus makes up for our falling. It takes us and makes us white as snow. And you can never have enough of the blood of Christ. You can never have enough. You can never have enough of asking God for more of his blood. Here's the thing, though. You need to have a head of protection around you. And, but see, you need to put on the mind of Christ. Not only that, you got to be, what, washed in the blood of the Lamb. you got to have the blood poured on your head. Not literally. That'd just be weird and really disgusting looking. But as I'm trying to say, it's, <laughs> you got to be washed in that blood. That blood, that oil that represents God's blood. Because the oil, it speaks about it on the cross. It says that when Jesus died, oil and water flowed from the cross. So... Oil and water dripped from the cross when he bled. So his blood was poured upon the cross, and then oil and water flowed from it as well. So the oil represents Jesus' death and Jesus' blood. So we got to remember this, that it's the blood of Christ that, that cleanses us and makes us perfect. We can't do anything. I don't care what anybody tells you. There's nothing that we can do that will make us absolute perfect. Because if you claim that you are absolutely 100% perfect, and I'm thinking about somebody right now who, who claims we have to be perfect, which is not the case. You can't ever be perfect. Let me tell you this. Don't let the devil deceive you. You can't ever be perfect because you'll be God. And who on earth or who in, in your lifetime or anyone's lifetime or in the entire world's lifetime do you know that tried to be God? Satan. And what happened to the guy? Well, he got cast into hell. Well, he got cast to the dry place where he belongs. He got thrown down from heaven. The Bible says, I seen Satan casted like lightning from heaven. What does that tell you? It tells you we can't apparently be God. And why would we want to be God? God has enough, enough of work on his own to take care of every one of our needs. <laughs> so why would we want to be God? We can't. Therefore, we can't be God, we can't be Jesus, we can't atone for no one's blood, we can't die on that cross. I don't think we'd be physically able to do it in the first place. First thing what happened is they'll, they'll take that nail, they'll raise up their hair, I'll say, stop, I'm done, goodbye, see you later. Andrew, we're all going to hell. No, you can't do that. You can't. Why? Because you're not God. You can't do anything that God does. You can't die on that cross. You can't save people. You can't this, you can't, you can't do nothing. There is nothing we can do to make ourselves perfect because why? We're not God. And if we were God, or if, if we try to be God, God would cast us out of hell and say, look, you're not coming in in the first place. You trying to be me? You trying to take my job? Well, yeah, right. It was like, what was that movie? Bruce Almighty. He tried taking over God's job. He goes, God, if you really are for real, then you show me what's going on because I am this and I'm that and the next thing you know it. All of a sudden, God shows up and says, Hi, Bruce. He says, Why don't you take my job for a minute? He says, Oh, yeah, it can't be that hard. So he he takes and uh, he uh, starts doing God's job, and you know, God, he's taking care of everything. Things are going perfect. People are falling in love and all this stuff, and things are happening great. He gets emails. Apparently, God gets emails now. <laughs> God can read your email. What that means is God can tell you exactly what's going on in your life. But uh, he reads the emails and he hits yes and send all. 
and everything suddenly goes out. Oh, that's easy. Next thing you know, two billion more emails come in, and more come in, and more come in. And he can't, I can't do this. Finally, gives up and gives it back to God. So you take your job back. I can't do this. He ends up in the movie becoming saved, and things happen for him. It's it's a good movie. But with that being said, as I gave an example of a movie, we can't be God. He tried being God, and it didn't work out for him. God has too much to do that we can't even fathom in our lifetime, no matter what. So with that being said, you can't be God. If you try to be God, you're just going to be just like Satan. He wants us to think that we're gods. There are people out there who think we're little gods. No, we're not. There is no such thing as a little God mentality. We're not little gods. Now, we are kings and princesses. In the word, it says that we're kings and princesses in heaven, but we are not little gods. There is no God deity. Don't get me wrong. They say, well, the deity of God lives in you, so that makes you what? God kind. No, it does not. It just makes us what? The family of God. It makes us brother and sisters in Christ. It doesn't make us little gods. No, we are not little gods. We will never be little gods. See, the devil wants you to believe that you are God in some shape or form. And we're not. See, God is not like like uh, the stock market. We don't buy shares of God and become little gods. No, we're not like that. God is God and God alone. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. God is the three in one trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. But we are not God in any shape or form. Little gods are nothing like that. There's nothing in this where we can do to be what? Perfect. Nothing. The minute we try, it's going to fail us again. I told this to my buddy Woody as he was picking me up last week for church. You need to pray, guys, for my sister friend Dolly at church. She is better now, but she is still weak from the COVID she had. But she is weak. She had a hard time breathing, too. But the thing is, she is okay. She's doing good. When I was talking to Woody, though, as he picked me up for Bible study, it just goes to show this, that I just, okay. Anyways, I lost my train of thought from it. Devil back off in Jesus' name. But I told Woody, I said, Woody, I said, I tried doing this show here on my own. It didn't work. What I thought was supposed to happen never worked until I gave it to God and let God take over the show and let God do what he wants to do. It's perfect. Because I let God do what God's going to do. He, Woody just laughed. I said, it never worked out my way. And we're not like... uh Frank Sinatra, who I did it my way. No, we did it God's way here on the show. And that's the way you got to do it, God's way. And God's way says that you're not perfect. God's way says that you can't do anything in this world to be perfect. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, again, 720, there's no man on the face of the earth who does good and does not sin. That just shoots that right down. There's no one on the earth who does good and does not sin. We ought not to sin, but do we sin? Absolutely. What's the first thing that happens when you get cut off? You mother scratcher, why I ought You start to think in all kinds of mean, nasty things that you want to say to somebody. And that's okay. Now, it's not okay that you're saying those things, but it's okay because, you know what? After you're done and you say, look, Lord, I have sinned. I am sorry. Please forgive me. You're good. The blood of Christ washed you over again and your garments are white as snow again. The minute you do that, your garments are white as snow. So guess what? It's all about the atonement of the blood of Christ that makes us what? Perfect. Nothing we can do on this earth will make us perfect. We can't pray enough. We can't fast enough. We can't, you know, talk to God enough. We can't read the word enough. We can get this word all day long into our minds so we can throw that word away. We can recite every verse and every scripture from beginning to end. But you know what? We're still not perfect. We can recite to you every every verse in that book that's from the beginning, from the God created the heavens and the earth, and we win. Because you know the Bible says at the end that we win, right? It says we win. And I'll read that to you. It's one of those things that, one of those little nuggets in the word that I know. But it says we win at the end of the book. Let me show you that. Just one of those weird little things that I know at the end of the word, at the end of the Bible, it says we win. 
just not in those exact 100% context. But here's the last page of my Bible. And the last scripture says, He who testifies to these things, to these things, say, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Again, it says we win. And here's where it says we win. It says, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. We win. Jesus is coming back for us. We win the fight. Jesus is coming back for us. If it wasn't that Jesus, if Jesus didn't say he was coming back, we wouldn't be winning. But we win because Jesus is coming back. When the trumpet sounds and times will be no more, the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. We win. And the saved on earth shall gather on the home beyond the shore when the roll is called up yonder. Guess what? I'll be there. You'll be there. Susie Smith will be there. Everyone, my wife, my pastors, everyone I know that is saved will be there. Do you want to be there? You can be. You can be there right now with us. You can be there as uh, Ray Boltz used to sing. It's called Thank You for Giving to the Lord. Thank you. It's called from Ray Boltz. Thank you. It's one of the greatest pieces. He says, He says, Another man stood before you. Remember the times. The uh, missionary came to your church and those photos he had made you cry. He said, you didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. God took the gift you gave and that's why I'm in heaven today. Think about it. He was there. Why? Because God brought him there. God loved him that much. God loved you that much that we can be there. And how do we get there? We ask for the blood of Christ. Let's pray right now for that right now. I know we prayed in the beginning for unrighteousness, but let's pray again. Lord, we only come back before you, Lord, and we know that we can't be perfect. We know that this word says that we all fall short of the glory of God every day. And in Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesi- yeah, Ecclesiastes 7.20 says, Lord, that there's no righteous man on the earth that does good and does not sin. So we know we're we're, we're rotten people, Lord. We know that we sin every day, that we're rotten, that we're no good. But guess what, Lord? You love us that much that you want us to ask for your blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, to cleanse over us so we can be free from that sin, free from the burden of it. And so, Lord, we ask you right now to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, even though the ones that we do not know about the subconscious, Lord. We ask you to be with us, ask you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, as Bill Gaither once said, we... If if you find anything that shouldn't be taken on strength and we want to live right, I want to be safe and I want to be whole. We thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross that we might be free from the burden of the sin. It's your blood, Jesus, that that atones us from death. So we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. So, last question. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But the blood of the atonement of Jesus Christ makes us perfect. So that's our message for today, guys. I hope you got something life-changing out of that. And this was supposed to be last week's message, but God wanted to do this week instead. It's just cool. It's okay. It's okay. Because I know God has a plan for what's going on. But last week we did good. We got 57 downloads. That means the message that I posted, which was a which was a throwback, went well. Everyone liked the message that I put on there. And we had a lot of recording last week because of things going on with the blessings God's bestowing upon us. But this week, God wanted this to go out, and it went. And we were not letting the devil have any reign authority over that. So with that being said, let's get into some music. Let's get into some good old-fashioned praise and worship with We Need by none other than the Cave Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy We Need. True. 
presence, O oh Lord. We need your pure heart. We need your true love. We just want to know. That, once again, guys, is We Need by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Let's get into our next song, and our next song is simply entitled A Worship Medley by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Enjoy Worship Medley.
That, once again, guys, was a worship medley by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Let's get into our next song, which is Hosanna by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy Hosanna. As Jesus came into the town, the people were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That was Hosanna by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. And as the Bible says, that as Jesus came into town on Palm Sunday, as Palm Sunday approached, Jesus came into town on a donkey. And he's in, he's in the crowd threw palm branches down saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because that Sunday, little did they know, was going to be the day that Jesus was to die on the cross. So, that next Sunday. So, with that being said, Jesus showed his deity from God as he entered into the city to where he's going to be crucified. And so they all yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed he comes in the name of the Lord and threw down palm branches. That's one thing that we got to do in our lifetime when anything goes wrong. We got to start yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because guess what? At the name of Jesus, demons tremble and Satan flees. Again, 
at the name of Jesus. Demons tremble and Satan flees. So let's do this. We got three songs to play. We'll do three last songs. We'll do two. We'll pray. And then we'll do the last one. Our next song is We'll Carry On by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy. We'll carry on. That was We'll Carry On by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Let's get into our next song, which is It's You by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy It's You. Same old sunshine Same old sky Same old bluebirds Flying by But it seems like the sunshine's More beautiful today It's not the change 
in the weather But the fact that we're together It's you That brings light into my life It's you That makes my future bright Whether it's morning, noon or night Lord, it's you Same old, same old Same old town same old people just walking around But I'm seeing the world in a different light tonight Not the stars nor the moon can't be anything but you It's you, it's you. that brings light into my life That makes my future bright Whether it's morning, noon or night Lord, it's you There may be cloudy days And those rainy nights Without a single star in the sky But if the sun and the moon should both refuse to shine I don't mind It's you, it's you That brings light into my life It's you, it's you That makes my future bright Whether it's morning Like the old song goes, it's you that brings light into my life. It's you that makes my future bright. It's you that, uh, I'm trying to think of it again. It's you that brings light into my life. It's you that makes my future bright. Whether it's morning, noon, or night. Lord, it's you. With that being said, how about we pray, and then after that, we'll play our last song, and then we will end it that way. How's that sound? So let me do one quick thing. Let's pray. Lord, we come humbly back before you, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, to be with us as we as we uh, end our shows. We go our separate ways, Lord. We ask you to be with, our, be with us as we end our separate ways and we go back to our regular days, as Gloria Gaither once said. We ask, Lord, to be with us, to uh, be with us on our every waking moment, Lord, and to continue to bless us as you promised in your word. I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing everyone to settle my voice, that not be what's selfish, not one of those I have to have just because whether 
I need it or I want it to bless other people with. So give them their heart's desires, Lord, as long as it not be what? Selfish. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross that we might be free from the burden of sin. That we, Lord, that we know that we're not perfect, but through your blood that we are. And I thank you, Lord, that you are healing people at the tops of their heads, to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, musc- like I have, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. I heal my mom's arm, Lord, that's not frozen. I heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that's not bad. And Lord... I ask you to heal those that contracted diseases themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, why? Because you will heal them. It shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. And not only that, Lord, it shows that you are God and that you are real. I'm reminded of a scripture, Lord, that says you're the same God yesterday. Actually, I forgot. I, I'm reminded of a scripture, Lord, because it shows your mercy, power, and grace. Hold on, guys. Excuse me, I had to sneeze there for a minute. And I'll probably sneeze again. Here we go again. Not yet. So it shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. Remind of a scripture, Lord, it says you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door, so you passed right through the door. You're all spirit at that moment. He said, Thomas, look at my hands. Rest your finger on my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? God on his knees and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But it doesn't stop there. It says, blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord. So when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say, I have to see it to believe it. Because you have already done it. The Bible says, and remind of the scripture, Lord, if you, it says you're the same God yesterday. No. It says you're the same God yesterday and today. No, it says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So show them now, Lord. So when they come back needing absolutely anything, they will not have to say, I have to see it to believe it. Because they've already seen it. If you did it then, they'll say, look, he'll do it again. So show them now, Lord, when they come back needing absolutely anything from you. They will not have to say, I have to see it to believe it. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering on that note. Thank you, Lord, that you are God and God alone. And that, Lord, you are continuing in our lives and continuing this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. So, our next and last song of the night for this episode of TGIF, Thank God It's Forever, is a song that I know and that I love. And I know the words to it right now. Praising my Savior all the day long. Blessed Assurance. Enjoy Blessed Assurance by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith, enjoy Blessed Assurance. Blessed is mine Oh, what a fall it is Oh, a glory divine Yes, it is Heir of salvation Purchase of God Born of His Spirit Oh, and I'm washed in His blood Will now be
perfect submission. Oh yes. Oh, and all is at rest. Oh yes. Oh, I in my say. I'm happy and blessed. Oh, watching, watching and waiting. Oh, looking up, looking up above. And I'm just lost. I'm lost in love. That, once again, guys, was Blessed Assurance by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. With that being said, let me say a few quick pieces of information I want you to remember. Number one, go to that, go to the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market, and download Podcast Portal, the app. You can do all those wonderful things on the app. And also, guys, ask your Alexa devices to what? To ask your devices to play Podcast Portal. It's just say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. We even got that skill on your video Alexa devices. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. Or she'll 
uh, actually say echo play or open podcast portal she'll say welcome to or welcome back to podcast portal and also guys I want you to be aware that was a hold on just for a minute guys I'll be back in just two seconds There we go. Apparently, Alexa thinks I was talking to her, which I wasn't. Ask your Alexa if I say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal, and she'll say, welcome to, welcome back to Podcast Portal. And you can listen to this very show from your Alexa devices. We even got this skill for your Alexa video devices as well. With that being said, also, guys, one last thing. Go, if you're on that YouTube and you hear me from YouTube, go and hit that subscribe button. That'll be a million times wonderful. And hit that notification. <laughs> bell so you can ring a ling ling and not miss the thing again if you're on youtube hit that subscribe button do us a world of good and hit that notification <laughs> bell so you can ring a ling a ling and not miss the thing and guess what guys that's it that is our show for today and as always this is tgif reminding you to one trust the lord in all your ways two lead not to your own understandings and three in all your ways acknowledge him he shall direct your path thank you and good night